everybody. What a fun little thing we get to do there, right? Switching out tilers, uh, different hair colors. I love it. Uh, so I, uh, I'm in a great mood right now, actually. I did just come to terms with the fact that I am a useless millennial. Thank you so much. Yes. I can't do anything, and it kind of came to head last week when my car wouldn't start, and I did all the things I normally would do to fix things in my life. So like my car wouldn't start, so I took the key out, got out of the car, waited 10 seconds. <laughs> gave my car a little time out. You know? <laughs> then got back in and tried to start it again. And then I did the next thing I know to do, which was take the key out of the ignition and then just blow into it. I was like, come on. Come on. And then I joined an AOL chat room, and then we figured it out. So, problem solved. Uh, no, it didn't end up working, so I did what we all do. I called the AAA baseball player. Um, he had two jobs. He also worked for a tow company. <laughs> yeah, they don't make a lot of money. They have to do a little more jobs. I mean, and maybe it's just me, but did anyone else growing up think that AAA was actually the graduation program of AA? <laughs> Like you get through all the steps and then you get to tow other drunks' cars around <laughs> to recruit them into the program as well. The guy got there and he was like, your battery's dead. And I was like, oh my god, I did not know I had an electric vehicle. That's amazing. <laughs> He's like, you don't. You have a 2004 Dodge Dam. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna park it in those cool reserve spots anyway. So. I was like, can I just plug in my iPhone charger? Please don't tell me my car's an Android. That would be the worst news you could get me right now. Shots fired with the Android talk. My bad. Oh my god. Android for life. Android for life? Wow, what a hard stance to take. You know, we all hate texting you. You know that, right? This is not a battle I want to get into. <laughs> my being a millennial, I also am too aware of all my like mental health weak points. <laughs> like for me, I spend way too much time thinking my decisions, what's going to come out of those decisions later. And I'm an overthinker. Anybody else here an overthinker? Yeah. If you're not clapping, you're probably overthinking. You should be clapping. <laughs> I started thinking of a therapist because then my parents thought that was really weird. They're like, why are you seeing a therapist? You should do what we did. Anytime you're sad, just write it down in a journal. Just write it down. Like, yeah, I don't want to see my sad thoughts in my shitty hand. That's not <laughs> making anyone feel better at all. Right. But my overthinking sometimes works in my favor because then I, I really get to in my head and sometimes I think of really good things. Like I recently figured out a way to get all my student loan debt down to zero. Oh. Yeah, I'll teach you guys right now. Uh, and here's why. I had to think of a really cool plan, because I had what's known as an income-based repayment system. And if you don't know how that works, that's just where you have to pay like a certain amount each month based on the number of inches your mattress is off the ground. <laughs> that's how I calculate. Yeah. Uh, but what I figured out is on the repayment website, I renamed my user ID to Tyler's Loans Have Been Forgiven. <laughs> And then I just waited for them to call. Okay, now everyone's figured it out. Let me explain. Because I call and they're like, Mr. Ross, are you going to make a payment this time? They're going to be like, hell yeah, I'm doing a sweet comedy show in Indiana. I got a lot of money coming my way. <laughs> I just forgot how to log in. Can you help me out? And they get so excited I'm finally going to make a payment. They rush through their script. So all I hear on the other end is like, Mr. Ross, you're going to make a payment. Let's get you logged in. Your username in our system is... Tyler's loans have been forgiven. And I say thanks and hang up the phone. Because <laughs> that's been recorded for my quality assurance, guys. <laughs> they try calling back, I'm just like, mm, why don't you go check the tape? Cindy was very chilled the other day. <laughs> and if you guys try doing that, don't use Tyler. Use your own name, just a quick aside. <laughs> 
My overthinking does but go in other ways. Like I always am worried about how people are perceiving me when I enter places. One thing that I really enjoyed about the pandemic was I love that there's hand sanitizer at the entryway of everywhere, right? Like I love going into a new place and getting a reset on my touchy parts. Big fan. <laughs> I just think you look different doing that at different establishments. So like when I walked into the grocery store, I looked hungry, right? I looked into the bank, I looked suspicious. <laughs> Or when I went to the, the sex shop near my house, I looked very creepy. <laughs> and I only went because I, you know, I've been like stuck in my apartment with my girlfriend for so long. We're trying to try something new, and I wanted to support like a local business. Like it's not one of these like big chain sex. Well, they sold big chains, but it was a one of these big chains. <laughs> My only worry was what the retail experience was going to be like, because sometimes you go into a place and they're really aggressive to get the sale. That was my worry about this sex shop. I was worried they were going to have like used car salesman energy going into it. Like I was worried I was going to walk in and they were like, all right, what's it going to take to get one of these and you today? And I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you guys check for credit scores here. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll say this, Indiana. I have a question. Um, why is there so many billboards in your state? <laughs> Every time I drive, I'm from Ohio originally, not to brag, and um, I'll drive through. And I, I don't. This is the only thing I've come to figure out. And you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like there's like a book it esque program where if you can prove you've driven along the interstates of Indiana <laughs> enough, that is how you get your Indiana GED. <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, it's real. Just got my religion credit. All right, done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I knew that. I'm in Indiana. Um, <laughs> I don't know why you guys are so sensitive right now. Okay, I'm not talking about Android. Let's get past it. <laughs> I do go home, to, uh, my family still lives in Ohio, so I'll see them every once in a while. Um, yeah. Whenever I go home, my, my dad will catch me with this, he'll throw this at me, he's like, you know, you need to start thinking about having children, because who's going to take care of you when you get older? I'm like, wow, dad. Do you think we have that agreement? Uh, <laughs> you're still paying my cell phone bill. <laughs> you die, I no longer have a phone. <laughs> I'm going to have to get an Android, probably. So <laughs> But the only thing that's weird is, he, he, it's weird that he asked me that because he uh, got remarried, which isn't weird. He had more kids, that's not weird. The weird thing was the timing. I was 21 at the time, and at 21 you shouldn't be getting new siblings. <laughs> you should be accidentally having children of your own, like an adult, you know? <laughs> I, uh, I didn't drink at all of 2020, that's a little thing. Uh, I, I, at the beginning of the year, I was like, I should take a break. This seems like a great time to not drink for an entire year. And then I got my vaccine, and I was like, let's try a reset. <laughs> How's Moderna and White Claw mix? Let's give it a shot. <laughs> and my problem is I've never had a good like ability to cut myself off when I'm out drinking. Like I think we've all reached that point where you're like, I know I should stop. I'll find any excuse to have like two or three or four or five more drinks after that. Like I was at a party not that long ago. Um, it was a friend's Christmas. And if you don't know what that is, that's just where one woman in her 30s will cook for a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> because she'll never have a family of her own. And um, sometimes people get mad at me, which confuses me, because you guys thought of a specific person as soon as I said that joke. <laughs> Like in your head, some of you are like, mm, Molly is kind of sad. <laughs> we should have invited her tonight. Her cats at Netflix queue could use a break. <laughs> but I was at this party, my friend was like, hey, do you want to take a shot at gin? And I was like, perfect, gin is disgusting. I'm not doing that, I'm cutting myself off. There's no way I'm gonna do that. Because gin is the one kind of booze that always makes me puke. Like we all have that one kind of alcohol that doesn't sit right with our tummies, right? Gin is that for me, and I was gonna say no. But I turned and saw he was handing me the shot in a Ninja Turtles cup. <laughs> I'm not gonna say no to Donatello, right? <laughs> like, guys, I know the difference between what's right and what's wrong, but if someone gave me like a SpongeBob SquarePants crack pipe, I'm not sure what I would say. <laughs> And I told that joke, last time I was in Indiana, I told that joke, and after the show, someone in the bar was like, guess what, I got a shot of gin that you have to take because it's a Ninja Turtles cup. <laughs> and he had just written the words Ninja Turtle on the cup. <laughs> <laughs> I went to grab it, and I was like, yeah, I don't think Ninja has a G in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe a couple laps with more billboards and we'll figure this out. You know? I also used to drink a lot, uh, I still do, but I drink a lot because uh, I, I, also, I work at Chicago Public School, I used to, I, actually yesterday was my last day of ever working at a Chicago Public School. Yeah. I'm just doing this now, so laugh harder at the rest of the set, please. Uh, or my grandma will know, you know. Uh, it's tough because working at a school, is there any, any teachers here? Yeah, I used to be. Hell yeah, exactly, used to be. That's what I'm running for. So, oh yeah. what, what grade did you teach? I was a general uh, music teacher at K-5 in inner city Cleveland. Okay, oh my god, I'm going my little Ohio stuff. I love that one. Are you my dad? Just kind of like, yeah. so, so you'll agree, you'll, you'll feel this. But the le worst part about it is people's misconception of how like working with working at school works. Because kids, people say this, they're like, oh my god, that's amazing. You work with kids? Like, nah. <laughs> I work against kids. <laughs> like, if you haven't been an adult in an elementary school, one of us is really in charge of all the interactions. Yep. Like, we're gonna, all right, we're done with the duet part of this. <laughs> <laughs> if I need you, I will tag you in. <laughs> like, I need a bathroom break during the middle of the day. kids the same way I feel like zookeepers work with animals, right? <laughs> and every day felt like a different zookeeper interacts with kids, like, video that you see. So some days it would be like, zookeeper plays with panda, right? We're like, throwing a ball to each other, we're doing TikTok dances, we're feeding each other leaves. <laughs> I've never fed a child a leaf, I feel like I should say that. But then on bad days, it feels exactly like that scene from Blackfish where the orca whale is pulling its trainer all the way to the bottom of the tank <laughs> in which they scream for them to stop. And I'll play in Canto again if you let me breathe. <laughs> and then other days it feels like I'm working with ostriches. I'm like, ew, gross, get your head out of there. <laughs> but my favorite day that we have had each year, we did this every year, is we have career day. You guys remember career day? When you still have hopes and dreams about becoming something? <laughs> At my school, they do this thing where on their they give all the kids shirts, and it would say future, and then a blank line for them to write whatever they wanted to be. And my favorite kid, I was so sad that I had to break the news, that on their shirt it said future actor. And I was like, oh my god. He spelled barista wrong. That's adorable. <laughs> Different kids said future vet, and I was like, oh, we don't treat those very well in this country. <laughs> Turns out she just wanted to do her dogs. <laughs> it was fun, though, because like I would be constantly learning things working with kids, which I didn't realize going into it, I would be learning, picking things up. Like, do you know this? While in heat, lions will have sex 15 times in one day. Also known as the worst day to go on a field trip of kindergarten. <laughs> Keep it moving. See what the cheetahs are up to. They made cheetahs, so they're pretty cool in my back. The hardest part about working with really young kids, though, is they're constantly trying to figure out how life works. And as we know, life's kind of a huge bummer most of the time. <laughs> and sometimes they'll come up with questions that are situational to them, but they have much larger implications that I'm not ready to answer. Like a five-year-old came up to me crying more than I've ever seen a human being cry. It was like a sorority brush week level of tears. <laughs> and if you have a better answer than me, let me know after the show. She just comes up, she goes, Mr. Tyler, no one's making me happy right now. <laughs> and like, how am I supposed to tell her, like, yeah, that's how it's always gonna be. <laughs> uh, download Candy Crush and join a fantasy football league. I don't know what to tell you. That's all I figured out. <laughs> And I wanted to take this moment to be like, oh my god, let me teach you about codependency and like only needing yourself to be happy. It turns out she was just wanting to use someone's fidget spinner. I was like, okay. <laughs> the world gets bigger than this, I promise. <laughs> but being a comic working at the school my first year, I made a couple mistakes. Uh, like, if, if you don't own your own child, you probably don't know this. Uh, yeah, you can't lease those things out, right? It's not like four years and 40,000 tantrums, you switch it out. You're stuck with your 2014 spoiled brat for life. Uh, but what I didn't realize is when you say something to a child becomes part of their knowledge base, they are terrible about picking up on sarcasm. Okay. So for a whole year I was accidentally teaching five-year-olds conspiracy theories. <laughs> Fun ones, okay? Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> 
kid came up and he was like, hey, why are we going outside today? And I was like, oh, buddy, it's raining. He goes, why is it raining? I said, well, because the government controls the weather. <laughs> I was hungover that day, <laughs> But I like completely forgot I had said that until the following week a different kid came up to me and was like, hey, why aren't we going outside? And from across the room I heard that first kid just be like, oh, there's nothing you can do. The government controls the weather. <laughs> so, well, I'm definitely getting a phone call because of this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how white kids end up with dreads, so that's on me, everybody. <laughs> My bad society, I'm sorry. I, uh, I didn't go to a public school growing up. I went to a Catholic school. Um, any, any other survivors? Yeah? yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> you don't know, like, they, the only thing I, this is what I remember. In Catholic school, they teach you it's a sin to masturbate, but what they don't tell you is it's not a sin to tell the nuns how good it feels. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get charged with two cents for one cum shot. Jesus said that. <laughs> In the letter to the Cumrithians. Okay, I'm done with that. That's the end of that sticky joke. Um, <laughs> you guys are fucking cool. Um, I, uh, during the pandemic, I mostly watched reality dating shows with my girlfriend. That was our big activity. Um, I, I, I feel like I watched every single one that exists. Like, I watched, like, too Hot to Handle, Married at First Sight, 90 Day Fiance, Temptation Island, Love Island, Love Island UK, Love is Blind, Love is Patient, Love is Kind. And then there's all the other ones. It's like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, The Bachelor in Paradise, The Bachelor Winter Games, The Bachelor Summer Games, The Bachelor Listen to Your Heart, The Bachelor Harry Potter, The Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> How do they knock at these things out, you know? I do like watching those shows with my girlfriend because we'll approach it like we're watching game footage of teams in different fights that we might later utilize in our own relationship. Like, I might never have to argue with my girlfriend about cheese spreads on a mega yacht, but we're goddamn ready if it ever comes up. <laughs> so now we have, like, we'll have fights and we'll reference, like, other reality dating show couples in our fights so we can really understand what the conversation's about. It's so, like a couple weeks ago, my girlfriend and I were arguing. She's like, I just want you to stop right now and recognize you're treating me like a real Doug season two. <laughs> Well, let's figure this out, because I don't want you to be Cynthia season four, so. <laughs> and that's our communication, you know? And I feel like everyone's got to figure out their communication, right? Like, we all do it in different ways, and whatever works best for you and your partner. Like, I was at a Blackhawks game a couple weeks ago, and I saw very publicly a couple mending a fence that they had built. And it was played on the Jumbotron in front of everybody. And just on the Jumbotron, they just show this tweet, and it just says, Jess, I'm so sorry for crashing your car, but we made it to the game anyway. Hashtag go Hawks. You don't go to that game, right? Like, what a weird way to apologize to your girlfriend via social media only. Like, I just wanted to picture there's a couple that knows each other so well and knows that they never fully fix their fights unless they do it over social media at a professional sports game. Like, later in the summer, I want to be at a game where it's just like, Jess, I'm so sorry for not taking out the garbage. I recognize it's more than just doing the physical task, but also listening, respecting you as a partner when you ask something of me. <laughs> Hashtag go Cubs go! <laughs> and that's my dream, you know? <laughs> it is weird though, like, I have so many friends that are trying to figure out dating, and they're running through apps like crazy, not knowing what to do. I actually think what they should do is they should steal some of the things they do on reality dating shows to like utilize with like Bumble and Tinder and stuff right now, like use the algorithms to their benefit. So here's what I think they should do. I think on all these dating websites, they should have a different feature that if you put like, no hookups, just looking for the real thing, and you match with someone else in their profile with that, you should be forced to live with that person for 30 days. It's like an internship into love with that person. I want to start my own side business that is exclusively short-term leases for new couples. And I'm gonna call it, is it real estate, right? And uh, we worked on this, it's cool. Uh, and just like those like dating shows, each week will be like a different challenge that you have to like figure out with this person to see if you really want to be in a partnership with them long term. So like week one, we'll, you know, you're trying to get to know this stranger, what's the best way to do it? 
we're just going to leave two grams of cocaine on your coffee table when you move in. <laughs> so get every idea you've ever had sent to this person immediately. It's in the shape of a heart. It's adorable. If you're vegetarian, we'll get Molly in there. I don't know how that works, but it's fine. I'll skip ahead. Week three's challenge. Week three's challenge is where we take your bathroom door away. <laughs> yeah, figure out each other's pooping schedule. It's important. My girlfriend and I, we have a system. Anytime I go in there and she knows to keep her distance, I'll play a certain song. It's the Monster Mash. <laughs> it's gonna be a splash. <laughs> Kidding, it's wheels on the bus. <laughs> and then on the very last week, you're probably wondering, like, what's the ultimate test of love two people can go through to see where their partnership one day could be at? And that is where we're just going to put a baby in your apartment. Yep, that's right. <laughs> see if the two of you want to own a child together one day. And you might be wondering at this point in the joke, where am I going to find all these random infants I can put in apartments across the country? I told you guys earlier, I work for a, used to work for a Chicago public school, so I got a lot of kids on repertoire, you know? And if that doesn't work, I'm going to start my own separate, separate side business where parents can rent out their children to do couples. And I, of course, I'm going to call this business Air Baby and B. And uh, that's the greatest thing I've ever come up with. Guys, my name's Tyler. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome.